Yo, guys, what is going on? It's Savage here, coming at you with another Madden 18 Ultimate Team video. We go 4-0 in another mud trip. I have some huge, huge advice for you guys. But first of all, I just want to thank you so much for the support last night. YouTube was a little buggy yesterday, but last night's video, we set a like goal. 250 likes in an hour, we smacked over 300. If we smack over 300 likes in one hour on this video right now, I will stream later tonight for probably a little bit over an hour. We streamed for about an hour and a half last night. So if you guys want another Savage stream, be sure to smack a big fat thumbs up. 300 likes in an hour, I know we could do it. We'd be killing it out of here on the YouTube grind. And fellas, today I have some very, very, very helpful advice in the mud drafts, just in Madden in general, really. And well, first of all, with the mud drafts, I've learned right now that drafting receivers probably is not the best, most important thing in the world. You need like two or three tops. If they keep four speed and receivers and you're forced to take them, oh well, you're just going to have to be forced to take them. But realistically, I've noticed that the overthrows in this game are actually really, 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 really relevant. And I, I don't really, need, I don't, I don't need overthrows in my life. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter what receivers I have. If the quarterback or something is bugged in the game, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? What's the point of having a good receiver if the quarterback's just going to overthrow them? So when you're taking your receivers, be mindful about them. Don't overtake receivers. If you get some extra D linemen, even that's important. You can play even some at outside linebacker just to increase the um, overall block shed. Now, with that being said, what I'm really, really, really going to focus on in this video, and you are going to see two mega shootouts. Two mega shootouts. One goes into overtime because your boy Savage is the most stubborn most ignorant Madden player when it comes to trying to make something work. And what I mean by this is I am so, so narrow-minded when something that I know should be working doesn't work. It's like, in a way, it's like, I'm like, all right, this should work. Okay, let me do it. And then it doesn't work. I'm like, damn it, but it should have worked. Let me do it again. Doesn't work again. Damn it, it should have worked. Let me do it again. You know what I mean? It's like I'm so persistent. I'm so, okay, it should be working. Why isn't it working? And guess what happens when people do that? They concede, they lose, they play dumb. I played extremely dumb in game two and game three of this video. This is what you have to do. When you see somebody coming out in cover two beaters, when you see somebody coming out in a cover two beater, play man. Okay, cover two beater, you're going to see me get beat in cover two 50,000 times because my user wasn't fast enough to play where I needed to play. And I had Dion Buchanan, who has 84 speed. He wasn't even fast enough to cut off a deep post because the zones right now are so broken. They are so broken down the field that it makes it really difficult to play cover two. But, but your boy, obviously, I'm coming out here with the best tips. I am helping you guys learn what to do and what not to do. Now, I've been saying this in my past few drafts. You gotta play a lot higher with your user. If you don't play high with your user, you're gonna lose. Because with the way that zones are right now, the deep blues play the sidelines. They play nowhere near the middle. You have to play that deep middle. If you don't play that deep middle, well, wait a second, Savage, Savage, Savage. Why don't I just come out and cover three? Cover three gets killed in seconds. Tampa 2, believe it or not, is probably your best option right now. It sucks to say that. That's all everybody really, really can run. Just because cover three is fluke. Cover four, the zones don't play low enough. If you run cover four, you get checked down every play. Even Tampa 2 gets checked down every play. It doesn't make sense. That should never happen. In real football, a Tampa 2 would never get beat like that as much as it does in Madden. I'm not saying in real life it, gets, it doesn't get beat underneath. But in Madden, it gets beat underneath too much, if you know what I mean by that. So, you see cover two beaters, you play man. If you see five receivers, or a tight end and four receivers, come out in man defense. The way that the amount of time in the pocket that players have when they're running five wide blows my mind. You know what happens when there's five routes running down the field? everyone gets open because there is no quarterback pressure. It is the most frustrating feeling in the world when, you're, when your opponent runs in circles in the pocket, which makes everybody's zone get out of place and dots you up. Nothing is worse than that. Absolutely nothing. And it sucks that that is what Madden is right now, but I'm helping you guys adapt by watching me almost take two L's because I am a very stubborn Madden player. I know what's supposed to stop what. 
but when it doesn't work, I get mad. And when I get mad, I try it again so I can outsmart my opponent. But me trying to outsmart my opponent ends up making me look like the dummy. Because I need to realize that, guess what? This is not any other Madden. And I tell this to you guys, and I tell this to people that are currently struggling in Madden. I say, listen, you gotta forget everything that you learned in all of the other Maddens in order to master this Madden. Meanwhile, I can't even take my own advice because I'm so, I'm so hard-headed. And I'm like, damn it, damn it, damn it. But, eventually, at the end of the games, I do come out on top. I do win, I do adjust my play style. Now, am I saying man defense against five wide is gonna box it? No. Am I saying that man defense against the cover two beater is gonna box it? No. Because still, when you are playing that man defense, you have to rely on one extra thing over the top to help you, the deep blues. The deep blues currently play too close to the sideline. Nobody knows why. And you know what else is crazy? You're gonna see this a lot. Drag routes pull hooks all the way down. Them little yellow zones get pulled by hooks, or get pulled by drags. Those hook yellow zones come down on a drag. Or they play 15 yards off of the drag. And it's like hit or miss. Hit or miss. And you are sitting there questioning. You will see it millions of times happen to me when the dude in the third game comes out in five wide. 50 million times on a wide receiver screen. He's running these DBL cross plays in out of five wide. He's running wide corner where it's just a post and two ins. And the, 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 the light blue on the right side in the cloud flat bites on the ends. That's not his job. His job is to protect everything behind him. Everything behind him. Never creep in front. Only tackle in front. Play zone behind. He was playing zone low. No one knows why this is happening. It sucks, but it's what we have to do as Madden players. This video right now will educate you with that much just by watching it happen live. And it confuses me because I know what is supposed to beat what. Just because from a football standpoint, you have to realize they're trying to replicate it. But they're replicate, they're, they in a way over replicated it. It's like in a way they're making the zones play conservative to where they're meant to get beat. Because main, like what I mean by this is cover two last year was beat down the sidelines. Cover two last year was beat down the sidelines with fade routes because for whatever reason, the cover two deep blues would never play the sideline. They would always play in the middle. Guess what's so funny about Madden 18? They only play the sideline. They never play the middle. It is completely reversed. In 17, no sideline was played. The middle was played. In 18, no, uh, middle, no middle is played. The sideline is played. They flip-flopped. They need to find that balance in between so that instead of having the user 10 yards away from the line of scrimmage, you can use her where you're supposed to line up. Because if you come out in a Tampa 2, a post route right up the middle with the two zones on the sideline is wide open unless your user is right there. And odds are your middle linebacker is not going to be able to play somebody running that route. Now, ma mainly a lot of people right now are running these little cheese post plays just because they can. In my opinion, they are not the wave because as much as they work, the overthrows are too fluky right now for me, which is why I say draft less receivers. This is a very, very insightful thing that I've noticed because if I am running drag routes, it doesn't matter what route running they have, it doesn't matter what overall they are, odds are the drag route is two yards away from the quarterback. I bullet pass it, I rack catch it, I run up the field. The zones play so far back with mixed coverage, it's not even funny. They always are playing far back. And when they're supposed to play close, they play even farther. Or when they're supposed to play far, they play even closer. It is like a dice roll and it confuses me. Now, is that a, does that make the game bad? No. Because in football, in real football, they obviously have to decide, do I want to jump it early? Do I want to jump it late? Do I just want to stay conservative? Do I want to play it aggressive? Do I not want to play it aggressive? It is a football game now. It's not cheese, but they need to just tinker with the aspects of how the zones are technically supposed to play it. That's my only complaint with it currently. That's it. There's nothing really else about the game that we need fixed other than the pass rush and the run blocking. The run blocking is extremely OP and there is no pass rush. The pass rush needs to be toned up a little bit because there's no reason a four-man rush cannot get to a quarterback. If I'm sending four and they're blocking five, most of the time a four-man rush will at least get a little bit of pressure. I'm not saying nano blitz. I'm saying pressure. Not nano blitz. I'm saying maybe make the quarterback have to move out of the pocket. 
doesn't mean the quarterback moves out of the pocket and sprints down the field for 35 yards. Because it doesn't. I've never seen Tom Brady run in Madden this effectively until this Madden. He has 60 speed, and he's getting 35-yard carries. Doesn't make any sense. It is kind of wild, but, you know, that got to be toned down. It has to be toned down. Just a smidgen. A smidge. Not too much. But, I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm pointing out. There's a difference between somebody complaining and somebody pointing out. And I don't want to be that complainer this year because I'm at 17 I complain. Right now, me pointing all this stuff out is to make you guys aware so you guys don't think that there's something wrong with the game. Because if I can at least help you understand, if I can just help one person who's watching this video understand why these things happen, it will make me that much happier to produce content. If I can make one person watching this understand why they should draft a certain way, it will make me 10 times happier. Yeah, it's just those little things that I thoroughly enjoy. Benefiting somebody else that's not myself is one of my favorite things to do. And if you watching this video are learning now why certain things happen, why certain things are the way they are, guess what? You made my day. You don't even have to tell me that you learned. As long as you know now why certain things happen, I am so happy for you. Because it's true, this game is solid, we just need to all 100% understand that a patch could happen at any moment, and once the patch comes, this game could be the best football game we've ever played. But with that being said, you are about to see our draft reward. Nothing crazy today. Made about 40k off the draft. It is going to be drum roll. You guys are going to see it. I always say it a little bit earlier, but it was the center Justin Brick on the Seattle Seahawks. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to big, big, big thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you learned anything or if you are getting better at Madden. Subscribe if you're new. Have a wonderful rest of your night.